We look forward to spending the next couple of hours with you to delve into this very interesting but highly elusive topic. Red illustrates the longitudinal fibers that are more parallel with the longitudinal axis of the finger. Here in this schematic drawing, we see that in extension, the fibers are somewhat more parallel to one another. But then as the finger flexes, one fiber may stay relatively longitudinal while the other has a greater angle of flexion. The dorsal apparatus coalesces and terminates in the terminal tendon insertion. It's a group of fibers distal to the PIP joint that connect both lateral bands as they move toward the terminal tendon insertion. But in pulling on the extensor digitorum communis, you see that the metacarpal phalangeal joint is extended, but the PIP joint is, nor the DIP joint are fully extended. The extensor digitorum communis can never be the primary extensor of the PIP and DIP joints. In the normal finger, it would always be secondary. There are multiple insertions of the interosseous muscle not at all uncommon. I am pulling proximally on the very central portion of the proximal aspect of the dorsal apparatus. One would assume that that tension is transferred directly into the central slip insertion. And we see that by pulling here, we're transferring t tension to the lateral bands. 